And then while I was, I, I got to slip away for a few days, been looking and praying and, and uh, trying to get away. Uh, uh, I love to ski. And, uh, of course, we, it's not like Southern California where you drive an hour and you could be swimming in the beach or drive another hour and you could be skiing. Here you got to drive a long way. But, you know, there's something about getting to the mountains. Man, God talks. The atmosphere gets clear. We were driving around and driving home and took a kind of a mountain tour about 200 miles uh, through the mountains, and it was just absolutely amazing. And, and I just, you just the, the presence, you just feel the presence of God. It was just so awesome. And uh, Benjamin and I went on up, and we had a, a great time. Uh, thank you for allowing me to get away and take out some of my aggression on the slopes. No, no, no. It was, it was awesome. God is good. It was warm. It was like 55, 60 degrees. So, but we had an, enough snow, so it was good. I, I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Matthew, chapter 21. And I'm going to share a word tonight and laying up to the final week. Today is, this weekend is what we call Palm Sunday. And this is the day that Jesus, Sunday, tomorrow, is the day that Jesus entered back into Jerusalem prior to his crucifixion, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, the events that are leading up. We saw in verses 1 through 6, he was outside the city, he sent his disciples to go get a colt to ride upon. They brought it back, and I'm going to pick up this story in Matthew chapter 21, verse 7. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and sped, spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Someone say blessed. Say it again. Say blessed. Now, I want to drop this in your spirit. We're going to get to it next week, and we're going to touch on this again. But when they were saying, Hosanna to the son of David, this is a, a statement. They used to say, Hosanna. They would walk around and declare, Hosanna, on the, during the time of the Feast of the Tabernacles. And they would carry palm branches. And what they were doing, the Feast of the Tabernacles is one of the major feasts in the Jewish tradition. And it was the feast that was celebrating God amongst us, or when God takes rule and reign in our presence. And so they were they would they they would actually carry palm branches and they would say what they what the phrase was they would say their hosannas which was a declaration that the king of glory has come. Huh. And so they saw Jesus coming in, and I don't think it was out of their intellect, but it was something that the Holy Spirit was doing on the inside of them, and they began to declare spontaneously, the king of glory has come. Huh? Hey. Now, I, I wanted you to put this in your spirit. We're going to come back to it next week. But it is amazing how they can go on Sunday from singing his praises to just a few days later saying, kill him. Don't be shocked when people turn. Shoo. <laughs> but we're not going to talk about the turning. We're going to talk about this part right now. So Jesus comes in, he comes back to Jerusalem, and God has spoken to me prophetically that the glory of God is coming back to the church before Jesus comes for the church. Hey, I, I tell you, I've never been in a time it's easier now. I, I tell you, if you're not out there witnessing, you're missing all the fun. If you're not out there praying for people, you're missing all the fun. Because there's a power being released right now. There's an anointing being released right now. There's a hunger on people right now. Oh, I feel a little preach coming on tonight. Hey. Hey. Come on. It is time now. Someone say now. Say it again. Say now. Say it again. Say now. Now is the time. And so here Jesus comes in, Hosanna. And then verse, whew, verse 11, and when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved. Mm, uh, I just got to tell you something is about to happen, that all the city is going to get moved. <laughs> that going to stop. <laughs> 
We had a group up witnessing last night up in Denton, and they were sharing and witnessing, and they talked to this one group. They started talking to these, these guys up there, these biker guys up there, and as soon as they started witnessing to them, these guys turned to them and said, hey, by the way, are you from the Upper Room Church? There comes a place of a reputation. There's some people who get outside the four walls who are not afraid to declare that Jesus is who he claims to be, who are not afraid to lay hands on the sick. I don't know about you. I don't want to be a part of some weak need, wishy-washy, backboneless, spineless, jellyfish, good for nothing, wine and nipple sucking baby hiding behind the four walls. Church. Now, y'all may be visiting and say, whoa, man, this guy's a little wild. You ain't seen nothing yet. Hey. <laughs> Only people that made church boring were preachers. I mean, come on. He's the king of the universe. And we're like, oh, we've come to the you know, the Lord bless thee. And I don't ever get that, you know. Hey, you know <laughs> everything's like thee, thou, thou, and thee, you know. We have, we have cometh to praise us, Jesus, today. Is. And Lord hath cometh, healeth us of our Lisbeth. Yeah. I know they made these things to try to keep me behind it. It just ain't working. <laughs> so I say, so... The, he turned it, stirred it up. Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. Now, I just got to drop it in your spirit because when Jesus really stows up, he has a way of turning everything over. He's going to make the comfortable uncomfortable. See, a lot of people don't want Jesus to show up. A lot of churches don't even want Jesus to show up. How many know a lot of businesses don't want Jesus to show up? The government doesn't want Jesus to show up. I saw a video on YouTube just the other day. I posted it on Facebook where a pastor is standing about 50 feet from the door of a DMV simply reading the Bible. He's standing on public property. The police officer walks up to him, grabs the Bible out of his hand, says, sir, you're under arrest. He said, what am I under arrest for? You can't do this. He said, I'm simply reading the Bible. He says, but the problem is they're a captive audience. Excuse me? They were waiting. He, he, and then they charged him for impeding the operation of a business. He's 50 feet from the door. Nobody blocking no entrance, blocking no people. They, the, the business, was, the DMV wasn't even open yet. Huh? This is the day we're coming to. Whew. Hey, don't, he's, and he said, you know what the cop said? You can do this in your home, and you can do it in your own place, but you're not allowed to do it out here. I got news for you. If the atheists can have a rally in Washington, D.C., and the homosexuals can walk half naked down the street, then somebody in the church is going to stand up. And say there is one true and living God. Hey, we're not intimidated by what others say. That's why I thank God for free speech. But free speech isn't for all those that don't like God. Free speech is for all of us. Oh, huh? When Jesus really shows up, they don't mind as long as he comes just to feed a little poor person. They don't mind as long as he does the nice little things. But when he shows up in power, when he starts overturning what makes us comfortable, back off. Jesus. Someone say when Jesus shows up. Say it again. When Jesus shows up. When Jesus shows up, radical things are going to take place. Come on, when Jesus showed up in the house, they, the whole house became filled with people. See, when Jesus really shows up, people are going to show up eventually. 
And it was so filled with people that it stirred up the faith of these four guys who had a friend who was paralyzed. And they brought him to Jesus to get healed. I'm telling you and I'm praying, oh God, let such a reputation hit this region. That there's a people in Keller, Texas who know how to pray and God hears and answers their prayers. May the Lord grant us such an anointing here that they start lining up out the door, bringing the sick, bringing those in wheelchairs, bringing the dot line, the lame and the deaf and the blind. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So they, they came, they tried to get in, they couldn't get in. So they started ripping the roof off to lower down their friend. And you know what I'll tell you? I'll tell you, you know what's going to happen? In most of our churches, you'd have a bunch of elders stand up and say, you're going to have to pay for that. When you get a people hungry enough, when you get a people desperate enough, when you get a people that need a miracle and they have no other way, when they hear the sound, that a king has come. <laughs> My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. So he set things in order. Someone say he set things in order. Then. <laughs> Somebody say then. See, that's what Jesus, the presence of God comes first to set things in order. To get the junk out of our lives. And the things that are in our lives that are hindering him from doing what he wants to do. He said, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. But the Bible says, know you not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are now the house of prayer. <laughs> and the word den there is a safe place for hiding. That you have made your, your house a safe place for hiding for those things which rob the purposes of God. That you and I are to be the house of prayer. I'm going to put on a little preach here right now. You and I are to be the house of prayer that all nations can come to you and I. And we can pray for them like I did that young man at church at the LA Fitness today. And you can pray for them and all of a sudden an arm gets healed right there in the middle of the gym. And he's sitting there and, and as a result gives his life to Christ. Someone say, I am a house of prayer. Then, when it gets set in order, then, <laughs> someone say then, <laughs> the blind. Shakaramasande. <laughs> I got to say something here. I'm not talking just the naturally blind. Stop complaining that the people here don't see. Stop complaining that they're blind. They're only blind as long as the church is not being the house of prayer. They're only blind as, as long as the supernatural of God is not in demonstration. Hmm. When people hear... That miracles are happening. Even the biggest doubters will show up to check it out. Hello. And stop waiting. I'm getting ahead of myself here for a moment. But stop waiting for God to bring in the miracle worker. <laughs> Somebody say he's in me. Say it again, say he's in me. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. But when, oh Lord, but when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? Jesus said to them, yes, have you never read out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants, you have perfected praise. Let me just put it in your spirit. When you start moving in the supernatural, it's going to be some other church folk. Are y'all hearing me? That are going to open up their mouth and they're going to begin to criticize and they're going to begin to mock and they're going to find some little thing to put their finger on in order to twist it. 
You know what they really say? Oh, look at that Jesus. Look at how full of himself he is. He's letting those children sing his praises. Oh, don't you get a big head now, because that's the moment you start praying for the sick, the moment you start leading like many of you did today, start leading people to Jesus, and then you start testifying to what God's doing, and some people start saying, man, God's really using him. Someone will come up and say, now, don't you get a big head now. Don't you get all full of yourself now. They'll start bringing that accusation. Why? Because they're not trying to protect you. They're trying to shut you down. Because they don't want you to succeed. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Oh, someone said the devil's a liar. Let me tell you something. When it's God, you're not going to have to worry. Well, I just don't want people to look at me. When Jesus really shows up, they're going to forget your name. They're going to stop looking at you. They're going to begin to look at him. Huh? Let me tell you something. One of the signs that God was really moving down at the Brownsville Revival, it was several years. I was in California. We, it was like two years in revival before I even knew who Steve Hill's name was. Why? Because God was moving so much more than the man. Oh, you all didn't hear that. You all didn't hear. Come on. Shh. <laughs> and it is going to be the innocent it is going to be the innocent that are going to, that's going to cry out. It's going to be the innocent that is going, to, that is going to give praise to God. Not the arrogant, but the innocent. The weak, the poor, the humble. I got to say this. I got to say this. Someone said the devil's a liar. How many know I'm telling you the truth? It's a whole lot more easier to get a move of the Holy Ghost to happen down in Stop 6 than it is in South Lake. Or West Lake. No, I'm... T Why? When you got people who don't have... They don't have a reputation to protect. <laughs> they don't have a means of, of buying a substitute. Oh, I'm in so much trouble right now. Shh. See, God never intended for the church to operate without the supernatural. He never intended for the gospel to be preached without the supernatural. Boy, I'm going to say that over on this side. Maybe, maybe I'll get a little better response. I say God never intended for the gospel to be preached without a demonstration of the supernatural. In Luke chapter 7, in Luke chapter 7, oh, Lord Jesus. Verse 22, they came up, John the Baptist's disciples, John the Baptist was arrested, thrown into prison. And he told his disciples, he said, will you go find out, is this Jesus the one? Is he the Messiah or should we wait for another? And so they came up to Jesus and asked him, told him, John wants to know, are you the one? So Jesus opens up his Torah, pulls out a bunch of prophecy scriptures to make an intellectual case that he is the fulfillment of all the... Oh, wait a minute. That's not what he did. Then verse 22, Luke 7 verse 22. Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things you have seen and heard. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them. You tell John you've seen miracles like you've never seen before. You tell him the blind eyes are open. The deaf ears are popping over. People are popping out of wheelchairs and dropping their crutches. You tell him that the good news is being preached not to the elite, but to the, to the humble and to the poor. You tell him what you've seen and what you heard. You tell John. Why? Because the proof that I am who I claim to be is not simply in words, but and a demonstration of power. Someone say power. Say it again, say power. 
Shukara Mahande. John Matthew chapter 15, verse 29. I'm sorry, let's go to John chapter 10, verse 37. Jesus said these words. Watch these words. If I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hang on here. Are you telling me we're not supposed to go through some apologetics? We don't have to go through some 14-point intellectual argument and debating with people? No, that's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, hey, if I don't do the works, and the context there is miracles. If I don't produce miracles, don't believe a word I say. Boy, it's quiet. It's getting quiet now. Come on, it's getting quiet now. Are y'all hearing me? If I don't produce power, don't believe me. Shh. How far have we gone? I said, how far have we gone? I'm going to say that again. How far have we gone? Boy, it's getting a little quiet in here because y'all know where I'm going. But if I, <laughs> that's what happens when you got a smart crowd. <laughs> if I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. But if I do, though you do not believe me, believe the works. That you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. So Jesus says, hey. If I don't produce miracles, don't believe me. And even if you don't believe what I say, at least believe the miracles. Now, I tell you, that's a far cry. That's a far cry what we hear from the pulpits of America to say, well, you're not supposed to be following miracles. Oh, and they kind of do. Oh, they're just miracle followers. They just want a sign and a wonder. Try to belittle that. Mm. Oh, they're just, a, they say this out of context. They're just a loaves and fishes crowd. How many of y'all heard that? Come on, they're just a loaves and fishes crowd. Jesus didn't rebuke them for following him because of the miracles. He rebuked them because they got a free meal and they just wanted a free meal. He, he rebuked them for that. He said, you should have come after me. He said, you didn't come after me because of miracles. You came out of me because you got a free meal. The miracles testify to the words. Am I talking to anybody here? Shikaramo Sunday. Ha. Don't mind me if I talk in other tongues. I ain't talking to you. The Bible says he who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto many, he speaks unto God, for he utters mysteries with his spirit. Matthew chapter 15, verse 29. Jesus departed from there, skirted the Sea of Galilee, and went up on a mountain and sat there. Then the multitudes came to him having with them the lame, blind, mute, maimed, and many others. And they laid them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. So the multitude marveled when they saw the mute speak, the maimed made whole, the lame walking, and the blind seeing. And what did they do? They glorified the God of Israel. Mark chapter 1, verse 23. Now there was a man in the synagogue with an unclean spirit. And he came out saying, let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. I got to drop some prophecies in here right now. Is that all right? I said, is that all right? I know it's a little warm in here, but maybe it's just the anointing. I'm shahande hehe kande. Shiri andorobo shahande. Karamo shahande. There is such an anointing about to be released upon the upper room church and upon the people of the upper room church that when some of you are out there in public, you're simply going to be walking down the aisle at a store or out in a public place and demons are going to start crying out. They're going to start manifesting even when you get near. You'll walk up and you'll hear this. This little thing will start rising up. Woo! 
I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. You better know what you better know that you got power too. You better know that you got authority too. You better know how to deal with that. Don't run from that. Just sit there and say, Jesus, and watch that thing jump. Hey! The blood of Jesus. <laughs> Why? Because when Jesus shows up, he's the light of the world. His light exposes the darkness, and the darkness can't help but react. And let me tell you something. If someone's got a devil, now I know some of you may not believe in that, but Jesus cast out a lot of devils of people, and I know y'all met some people. Y'all might be related to some people. Come on, one moment they see a fine, and next moment this stuff starts coming out of them. And you say, what is that? They're not having a bad day, and it ain't just that time of the month. It could be a devil. Shouldn't let me go skiing very often, man. I come <laughs> Hey. <laughs> Cried out, but Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet. Don't have a conversation with no devil. Speak to that thing. Hush up. I remember one of the first times I dealt with a demon-possessed girl. We were in my church. I mean, my youth group. I just started youth pastor. I wasn't even a youth pastor. We just had this Friday night Bible study, and, 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 and we called it Rad Night. Radically armed disciples. And, 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 and there were, we had maybe a 40 kids there at that point. And then somebody, I don't know where they came from. She came and visited and she sat on the front row. And we sang the first line to the first song. Now, I didn't even have musicians. We did it all a cappella. And the song wasn't particularly deep. It wasn't some deep worship. It was sold out and radical. Sing a new song forevermore. You know I'm sold out and radical. I'm going to soar, soar, soar. I mean, that was it. <laughs> well, I saw like an eagle, fly like a bird, totally set free by the power of his word. <laughs> Okay, we got to move, move past memory alley. All right, so we hit the first long, sold out and radical. And this girl in the front row goes, ah, and runs out the door. <laughs> Man, and the Lord spoke to me, and I'm leading the service. He says, go out and get her. And I'm having an argument inside with God while I'm singing. And inside I'm saying, God, there's nobody to lead worship. I'm all by myself. So I quickly signal a couple of girls and I said, go get them. Go out and get her. And they run out there for a few minutes and I'm singing, singing, singing. And the Lord said, I told you to go out. So I called somebody else up who I knew could sing. She was just visiting. She's from the church, but she'd never been in youth group. I said, will you please lead worship? I got to go get this girl. So this building we're in is on, it's, it's, it's this church kind of on a hillside in San Diego. And the youth building is up about 40 feet higher in elevation than the main church. And it's way up there. And so I come outside and the two young ladies had all gone all the way down, circled the entire church, couldn't find her. They came running up, and I said, where is she? We don't know. I said, I know she's out here because Jesus told me to come out and get her. <laughs> and so I'm looking around. Now, there's a street here and then some side streets that go up another hill. And way up this side street, 
up in, it's dark up there in the middle of the street. This girl is in the middle street, crouched down, growling. I was like, man, somebody get some Alpo or something going on here. So I'm trying to deal with this thing, and I try to start dealing with it with the natural. Don't deal with the devil in the natural. I said, now, it's okay, sweetheart. It's okay. Calm down. It's all right. I just want to talk to you. And I'm walking up the street to her. She's like, yeah. I'm serious. All these animal noises. Finally, I get up to her, and I was like, all right, okay. And she starts getting this look on her. And I was like, okay, this gets serious. I said, I bind you in the name of Jesus, and I command you to not move. And she went, And so I walk right up to her. <laughs> She's not moving. And all of a sudden, as soon as I got to her, she went, bah! and she took off running. And I said, that's right, Holy Ghost. Take her to church. She ran right down the building and right back into church. That's a dumb devil. Got 40 radical teenagers worshiping God. What is that devil thinking? So I go now, chase her back down, get in the building, and she runs into a back room, get back there. She starts growling and saying, I'll come speak to that devil, cast that thing out. God totally set it free. She got saved. She was smiling. Hallelujah. Praising God. Brought her out of that room a few minutes later. The place went crazy. Hallelujah. So I stopped preaching. I'm a little fired up. <laughs> And then one of my leaders stands up and stands over here. Or no, it's one of the young ladies. Now, I mean, we're in a room. It's a small room. room. It seats maybe 100 people. And she comes around this little pole and stands there. I'm preaching. And she says, psst. I have to talk to you. I said, I'm preaching. Psst. So I turned to this other uh, leader and I said, will you find out what's happening? So they go in the back room and they talk for a moment and the young girl comes and sits down and my leader stands there and I'm still preaching and she stands right there and she goes, psst. I have to talk to you. What is it? Let me tell you something. If you don't know how to be flexible when you're preaching, I said, what is it? She said, the girl next to her is growling. I said, not another one. I looked over and her eyes are rolled back in her head and she, she's like, some, I said, two in one night. Exodus, eat your heart out. I mean, this is a mess. So I'm thinking inside, I'm still trying to preach. I said, Lord, what do I do? And all I'm in the middle of my message, and the Lord speaks to me. He says, start talking about how I dealt with devils. So, I mean, I don't, I'm mid-sentence, I suddenly changed my message. And I just, I just out of nowhere said, and when Jesus came up against the demon possessed, he spoke the word, and that devil went, ah! And slid out of the chair like a snake. And I said, Lord, what do I do inside? Lord, what do I do? Keep preaching. So I kept preaching, kept preaching, kept preaching for about five minutes as this thing is, you know? And then, and then the Lord said, now, as soon as I said, now, I turned to that devil and I said, in the name of Jesus, come out. That thing screamed, Young people started praying. I was so proud of them. They didn't get freaked out or scared. They started going, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. I turned to that devil. I said, in the name of Jesus, come out. It said, no. I said, ha, ha, ha. It said, why are you laughing at me? I said, because you don't have any power to stay. In the name of Jesus, come out. Bam, that thing left.
Oh, somebody give God praise. That young girl totally set free by the power of God. Hallelujah. So Jesus said, be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out. <laughs> then they were all amazed. <laughs> it's going to happen. I t somebody say it's going to happen. Oh, Lord Jesus. Pastors, you got to get ready. We're going to have to deal with some of this stuff because we're going to have some teenagers so fired up with God, so full of the anointing, they're just going to be sitting in math class, and all of a sudden the teachers start going to go. <laughs> They'll be sitting back in the third row going, Kurabashakaramasahe. <laughs> Jesus. That's why they don't want you to say the name. That's why they want to shut it down. Whew. They don't mind you saying God because they can make it any God they want. But when you say Jesus, oh, <laughs> oh, she caught on my Sunday. Hey, ha. <laughs> they were all. <laughs> They were all in there. You think I'm kidding. You think I'm kidding. I'm telling you, I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus. The day is coming when principals are going to start calling up some local pastors and saying, Pastor, we need you to come down here. We don't understand what's happening. But there's young people falling on the ground, shaking and speaking in a funny language. There's teachers that can't get out of their seats. We need some help. We don't know what this is. Come on, what are you believing for? Nice little quiet church, what are you believing for? Some little Chris, mealy mouth Christianity. I'm believing for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost that'll sweep this region with signs and wonders. Woo! <laughs> then they were all amazed. So they questioned amongst themselves, saying, What is this? this <laughs> why are you so concerned about people talking behind your back trying to figure out what is this what is this rolling and what is this gold dust and what is this power and what is this me what is this <laughs> what new doctrine is this Are y'all hearing me? It ain't a new doctrine. God was doing miracles in the Old Testament. He's doing miracles in the New Testament. The only reason they thought it was a new doctrine is the present-day leaders of the church of their day, the present-day religious leaders, had no power. So because they'd never seen it before, they thought it was a new doctrine. Oh, come on, you should amen just a little bit better on that one. Come on. The only reason they got all freaked out, the only reason they thought it was a new doctrine is because the present-day leaders weren't walking in the power. And the same thing is true today. The only reason people think they're casting out devils and healing the sick and raising the dead is strange. The only reason they think it's strange that you passionately want to go after God and worship God and be in the church every time the doors are open. The only reason they think it's strange is because the people and the preachers they've been around ain't got no power huh Come on, this is not bold or arrogant. Come on, Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. What new doctrine is this? For with authority, <laughs> he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. <laughs> and immediately his fame spread 
throughout all the region around Galilee. When God begins to show up and begins to flow through you, it ain't going to be your fame that spreads. It's going to be his fame. <laughs> the Amplified says it this way, Mark 1, 27 and 28. And they were all so amazed and almost terrified. And almost terrified. I think they've been taking some pictures of upper room church services. Because we got some people here, y'all, to see their faces. They're all they're fine during the worship, and they're okay during the preaching somewhat. But when the power of God starts falling, you ought to see their faces. Start checking out, making sure that back door ain't locked. You know, can I get out of here? They start taking their friends. What would you bring me into? I got... Don't you be concerned about that. Don't you sit there and not invite people because you're afraid they're going to get a little, maybe just a little terrified. Come on, I haven't found one place in the Bible where God showed up and there wasn't a little fear. Huh? There wasn't a little bit. Well, come on. When God revealed himself in the Old Testament and New Testament, often they'd fall to the ground and, and fall to the ground as though dead Every time an angel showed up, every time an angel showed up, first things out of his mouth was, fear not. You know why? Because when a nine-foot angel shows up and says, hey, you're not going to sit there and say, yo, what's happening, dude? Come on, give me a little bump. All right. <laughs> Come on, can we reheal? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. They were almost terrified that they kept questioning among themselves, a questioning and demanding one of another, saying, What is this? What new fresh teaching? With authority, he gives orders even to the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And immediately, rumors concerning him spread at rumors rumor you know you can become famous and not be very popular are y'all hearing me famous doesn't mean they're all gonna like you famous simply means they all heard about you oh come on am i talking to anybody here some of you that's what happened when you got saved you were just kind of the nobody in your family chain then you got radically saved and all of a sudden rumors started spreading around oh they they became a holy roller something happened to john he's a little jesus crazy now all your friends started talking to each other facebook at each other look out john's got religion am i talking to anybody here Better watch out. Don't talk to him because he's going to start preaching Jesus to you. You better, you better look out. If he drives up to your house, pretend you're not there. He might lay hands on you. Come on, do you have the reputation in your job? I'm in so much trouble right now. Oh, <laughs> better watch our language. He might start speaking in tongues. <laughs> Lord, help me. <laughs> Mark 16, verse 15. Whew. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow the senior pastors and the guest evangelists and those who Benny Hinn has thrown his coat on These 
signs will follow those who believe. Do we have any believers here? Somebody say these signs shall follow. No, no, no. You're not going to. They're going to follow you. They're going to follow you. I said they're going to follow you. You'll be walking down the street and all of a sudden, poof, there's a miracle. Somebody say they're going to follow me. Say, well, they're not. You know why? You have not because you ask not and you don't believe. If you believe they're going to follow you, get ready. They're going to start following you. Why? Because you're not producing them in the first place. Oh, come on. That's what, that's what Peter said. Why do you look upon us as if we healed this man? But it was in the name of Jesus whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. <laughs> These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they will cast out demons. Huh. They will speak with new tongues. Glory to God. I don't know why some people, even spirit-filled churches say, well, not everybody's going to speak in tongues. Hey, 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 bless you. You know, be my guest if you don't want to be a tongue talker. But it says right here, these signs will follow them that believe they will. Not they might. Not every third person. Not only those crazy Pentecostals. Everyone who believes is going to speak in tongues. It's what it says. Hello. Now, for all you rednecks, I got to bring clarification to the next part. They will take up serpents. He wasn't talking about having a snake handling service, all right? It's a demon. And if they drink, and drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. What are you all afraid of? Huh? What diseases are you afraid of? They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. Someone say they will. Say it again. Say they will. Someone say they will. You say, well, brother, say I ain't seen it happen. Let me tell you something. If this little switch will happen inside of you, you'll start seeing it happen. Stop begging God to do it and stop wondering whether he's going to do it. Just stand up in boldness and say, hey, you need me to pray for you? God's going to heal you right now. And pray in faith, trusting God, and watch what God will do. <laughs> I got it. Whoo, whoo, Sean. They're going to have to carry me out of this building tonight. Oh, somebody lift your hands and talk to the, in the Holy Ghost for a moment. <laughs> hey, come on, give him praise. Open your mouth and bless him. Open your mouth and praise him. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Sunday. Come on, somebody talk to him. 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 She cut him a Sunday. You weren't called just to sit on a pew. You weren't called just to sit there and be a nice little comfy Christian living some basic moral life. You were called to be a vessel, a temple of the Holy Ghost with signs and wonders following. Cut about Sunday. 
These signs shall follow. These signs shall follow. These signs shall follow. Those who believe, those who believe, those who believe, somebody lift your hands to God. Come on, talk to him in the Holy Ghost. Come on, talk to him in the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, Shakarama Sunday. Jesus, 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 he said, if I don't do these miracles, if I don't do these works, don't believe me, don't believe me, don't believe me, God never intended for the world to trust in simply words. He never intended for the world to simply trust because some preacher said it. He intended for the world to believe on him because those who carry his name and those who speak his word have accompanying signs and wonders that follow. When they pray, there's power. When they pray, people feel something. When they lay their hands on the sick, they get better. Oh, God. It's God's will. It's God's will. It's God's will. It's God's will for my life. Come on, you declare it. It's God's will for my life. It's God's will for my life. That signs and wonders follow me.